Good morning, St. Pete. As we speak to you from our emergency operations center here at police headquarters, it is my hope and prayer that you have your emergency plan in place and that you are executing that plan. I'm joined today by our city leadership team, um, by members of our city council, by NAACP uh, President Esther Matthews, and our own state representative, Michelle Rayner. Thank you all uh, for joining us today. As you know, Hurricane Idalia is still on track and has become a powerful uh, Category 3 hurricane, will become a powerful Category 3 hurricane at landfall. I want to emphasize what residents, especially those living in low-lying areas, can expect tonight and into tomorrow. Heavy wind and rain will occur throughout the evening tonight. You may wake up tomorrow and see sunny skies and think the storm is over. But it's important to understand that the highest impact for storm surge is tomorrow afternoon around 2 p.m. Please stay in your homes, stay alert, and wait for the message from officials that it's safe to leave. Now, even though the storm track has shifted a bit west, we still project the same four to seven feet of expected storm surge, and we need everyone to take this storm seriously. We anticipate a wind event tonight and in early hours of Wednesday morning, followed by the storm surge. We hope everyone that needs to evacuate uh, and we hope everyone that needs to evacuate has done so and the sun will come out tomorrow on Wednesday and it could appear that the threat is over. But we anticipate that being the time we see the highest storm surge. It's very important to understand that. So we need everyone to be vigilant and listen for updates to keep themselves and others safe through the next several days. And please, if you do not live in a low-lying neighborhood, do not visit or sightsee. We need you to stay in place, and we will have our law enforcement and uh, St. Pete Fire Rescue teams in place to make sure that only folks that live in those areas have access. But please wait until after the second surge tomorrow, after 2 p.m. Protecting yourself and your family along with checking on your neighbors, that mindset is more important than ever. So as the hours pass and we start feeling some of the impacts from this storm, please keep this old saying close to heart as you make decisions overnight. Property can be replaced, but lives cannot. I want to take a moment to reiterate several of the critical points that we mentioned yesterday. Pinellas County has called for the mandatory evacuation of Zone A, which includes all mobile homes. That order is in effect right now. And it's important to underscore that given the powerful force of this hurricane and the potential of tornadoes spawning from it, there is no safe place in a mobile home. And for those of you under evacuation orders, and that's nearly 338,000 people in Pinellas County, please seek out an area higher than Zone B, just in case the forecasted conditions get worse. And as we know from Hurricane Ian, the storms can change their projected path. And keep this in mind, you don't have to travel hundreds of miles away. You can steer clear of zones A and B and still be within the city limits or in one of our closest neighboring cities. 10 shelters are now open in Pinellas County. Four of those shelters are right here in St. Petersburg. John Hopkins Middle School, which is also a special needs shelter. Gibbs High School, which is pet friendly. Campbell Park Elementary and New Heights Elementary. Again, this includes a special needs shelter at John Hopkins Middle School. Special needs transportation also began this morning and is underway. For our special needs residents who have pre-registered with the county, staff will contact you to arrange for your transportation. During Hurricane Ian, we had many residents who decided against evacuating because of their pets. I personally understand your concern as a proud pet parent as well. But please remember, several pet-friendly shelters across the county are also available for your whole family. I want to thank our team. They've handed out more than 69,000 sandbags since Friday, more than 58,000 just yesterday. Please note we are no longer distributing sandbags due to safety concerns and to allow our employees to secure their own homes. That's just one action to help minimize flooding in our neighborhoods. Another significant action is to drop water levels at all ponds and lakes. And our public works teams got that job accomplished yesterday and will continue to monitor levels across the city.
Our sanitation crews will make their final rounds today. So your trash will be picked up as originally scheduled today, August 29th. Once picked up, please make sure your cans are secured after the pickup. Finally, St. Pete, we are all in this together, uh, and we all have, work, have to work together for the best possible outcome. Time is running short to make sure you're prepared for this storm. Again, think of the village, check on your neighbor, and assist when you can safely. Grab a few extra bottles of water or, or other beverages to share, <laughs> especially with many of our large retailers' uh, shelves empty right now or running extremely low. Please stay informed and watch the forecast. Last minute changes can occur, so be ready to react if needed. Adaptability is the key. We are St. Pete. Thank you all for your partnership. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, Jeff Baker from Duke Energy, who will have some words uh, right after uh, Yolanda. I'm going to provide a summary of what Mayor Welch said for our Spanish-speaking residents, para nuestros televidentes que hablan español. Voy a dar un sumario de lo que acaba de decir el alcalde Welch. Primero, que los residentes que viven en las zonas bajas, es muy importante que ustedes sepan que tienen que evacuar. Esperamos vientos altos de más de 40 millas por hora. Es posible que lleguen a 100 millas por hora. Y es aunque mañana salga el sol y uno espere que ya todo haya pasado, la marea alta va a volver a las 2 de la tarde mañana el miércoles. Es muy importante que si usted vive en una zona baja o en una casa móvil, que por favor no vuelva a su casa o que sepa que no va a poder salir de su casa a las 2 de la tarde mañana. Y también le pedimos a esa, aquellas personas que quieren ir a mirar y, y manejar por esas zonas que por favor no vayan a esos vecindarios porque esa agua puede entrar en las casas si una, uno maneja vehículos en esas zonas. Así que por favor, si no vive allí, no vaya a mirar lo que ha pasado. Eh, es importante que uno sepa también que aunque la tormenta ha cambiado un poquito al oeste, que aquellas personas que viven en las zonas A o en casas móviles tienen que evacuar si no han evacuado ya. Ya con nuestros uh, residentes que tienen necesidades especiales, hemos empezado con la ayuda de los bomberos esta mañana a transportar a aquellas personas a los refugios que tenemos en la ciudad. El refugio de John Hopkins Middle School ya está recibiendo a personas con necesidades especiales que nuestros bomberos han transportado y también en la ciudad tenemos a Gibbs High School, Campbell Park Elementary y New Heights Elementary. Quiero explicar que en Gibbs High School Eh, aceptan mascotas. Así que si uno tiene una mascota, no tiene por qué quedarse en la casa por esa razón. Puede llevar su perro, su gato y con todas las necesidades de estos animales a Gibbs High School para poder tener refugio allí dur durante la tormenta. Queremos decir que ya hoy no vamos a dar uh, sacos de arena. Lo dimos todo el fin de semana, hasta ayer, hasta las 7 de la noche, dimos más de 69 mil sacos de arena a nuestros residentes. Pero es importante ahora que las personas terminen sus preparaciones y ya estén listos para lo, donde van a estar esta noche. Y también eso incluye a nuestros trabajadores. A nuestros trabajadores de basura van a pasar esta mañana a terminar su ruta para recoger basura. Pero después de eso, le pedimos a todos que por favor, por favor recojan los latones de basura de la calle para que ellos no den un problema después con los vientos altos que vamos a tener en esta área. Y finalmente, por favor, manténgase informado. Miren, a ver, la, la vía del huracán es muy importante estar informado y saber lo que está pasando y mantenerse eh, en la casa si no piensa evacuar. Gracias. Thank you, Yolanda. I also want to recognize Senator Dal Roussan, who's joined us. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Jeff Baker from Duke, would you like to make some comments? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mayor. At Duke Energy, we're prepared for what lies ahead. Uh, we, in the past days, we have secured additional resources. We'll have about 4,500 people coming from our utilities in the Midwest, as well as other utilities in the Southeast. These will be line crews, vegetation management crews, and damage assessors. We've also secured additional supplies to make sure that we have what is needed for the restoration efforts. 
one of the things that the mayor said is, you know, be prepared. And, and as far as power outages, that applies as well. You have supplies at your house, be prepared that there will be power outages. And also think about, th you know, how you will respond after a power outage. Some things to be aware of, you know, if a line is sagging or down, please stay away from that line. If you have pets, make sure that you don't let them roam freely because unfortunately there have been pet fatalities in the past because the pets have encountered uh, live wires. Another thing, if you have generators, please ensure that your generator is properly ventilated. For most people that means it needs to be outside. Uh, unfortunately, we've all heard stories of people losing their lives because the generators were not properly ventilated. If you have space in your freezer, please fill that up with ice bags, things of that nature. It will give you additional time should your power go out. So those are the things that we, that we ask you to do to help us help you. And we look forward to uh, working very diligently to get the, all the power restored as quickly as possible. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, we'll take questions now. Okay. Heather with ABC Action News. Um, you guys are able to, in some cases, restore power digitally, in other cases not. Can you just talk about the difference and when you would maybe be able to go out if you aren't able to restore digitally? Our crews are not able to go out for restoration until it is safe to do so. Uh, and that typically means 35 mile per hour or greater sustained winds. Our crews are not able to go out. Uh, what you're referring to is what we call uh, smart grid technology. Uh, over the past several years, we've inv invested significantly in smart grid technology. And what this does, it allows our system to self-heal, if you will. Um, obviously, those um, systems will be operating during this storm. Um, and I know in, you know in past storms, we have seen significant advantages. Um, I know in the last you know, major storm we had, we had over 3.3 million minutes of uh, interruptions that did not occur because of that smart grid technology. So all of that will be activated as well. Other questions? Um, Mayor, any sense of how evacuations are going so far? I think we're seeing less than a robust response. Um, Amber, did you want to? Where's where is it? There you go. You're right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have any more information on that? Um, I don't have specifics. From where what I hear, it's going rather smoothly. Um, as what um, Mayor alluded to earlier, we're not seeing a um, a large evacuation as, as maybe we'd hoped as far as in shelter capacities. There's lots of shelter capacity, I think, is the message there. So whether that's folks are heeding the warning and, and making the shelter the last resort and finding other host homes or hotels, uh, that's great. Um, so the message is there's lots of room in the shelters if you need shelter to make sure that you make your way to one. Can you um, potentially talk about, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what she just said, just talking about the idea that, you know, a few years ago we had Ada come through, it was a tropical storm, people were like, oh, it's just a tropical storm, no big deal. But St. Pete saw pretty significant flooding in some of their neighborhoods, so this is a stronger storm potentially coming our way. Um, can you just talk about the storm surge, you know, being potentially worse than it was even then, and the importance of... Well, the projection right now is four to seven feet of, of storm surge, and I think that less than a year ago we had a better, uh, even a better example of Ian. You know, Fort Myers, Sanibel was on the outside of the cone. Um, this time, uh, a relative, they thought they were in pretty good shape, and then it took a turn. That can happen here, and so folks shouldn't relax until the storm is well past us. And even when it's past us, we're still going to see storm surge late um, Wednesday afternoon. So this isn't past us. Folks need to stay vigilant for another 24 hours, and then we'll be in much better shape. But storms are unpredictable. Folks that have been in Florida for a long time know it. Maybe folks who are newer to the area see that track and think they're safe. And we know from Ian that is not the case. Do you know when crews uh, are out, uh, when it might be safe for them to do so? Would that be like Thursday morning to start doing like debris and the assessment? Uh, recovery crews? Mm -hmm. Let me ask uh, Rob, Administrator. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, St. Petersburg. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the Mayor for his leadership. Um, he's been totally engaged. And the Administrators and the Chiefs and Ambers, I, I think we're really well prepared for this storm. We, we are preparing 
um, as if we, we could get a direct hit, and that's the, the attack that we're taking and the posture that we're in. Um, I, I think on Wednesday, um, after the winds subside, uh, Colleen will be in a position to go out and start making assessments on damage, uh, also clearing debris uh, for access to hospitals and other emergency needs um, if that scenario arises. Thanks, Rob. Any other questions? Is there anything being done differently compared to past storms? I know this is, every storm is different, so have you learned anything from, you know, previous storms that you're implementing this time around? Well, from my perspective, it's a lot faster. Uh, we've had less time, a compressed time to respond to it. Um, but I think we've implemented a lot of lessons learned from previous storms. Our sandbagging, for example, happens year round, not just during a storm watch. Uh, you want to talk about any other sure. changes we've made? Um, I'll just say with every disaster, we get better um, because, as Mayor mentioned, those lessons learned. So whenever we um, have an activation, you know, post-storm or post-activation, we all get together and talk about it, what went right, you know, what can we improve on, and then we implement those changes next time. So we've gotten significantly better at sandbags since Hurricane Irma. Um, we've got better at staffing our EOC and, and doing those activations, you know, even since last year from things that we've learned. As you said, every storm is different. Um, we've learned to prepare for our risks and not necessarily for the forecast. Um, as, as Rob mentioned, so yes, we're out of the cone, yes, a lot of us are kind of breathing a little easier. However, the risks are still there. The forecast, you know, still tells us to have, we could have four to six feet of storm surge. So we're preparing with that posture and moving forward that these are what's anticipated on the current perfect tract. And if that storm takes that southern edge of the cone, it's going to increase those impacts. So we're going to be ready for if that happens. And that's all from lessons learned in past storms from ourselves and our neighbors. Thank you, Amber. If I could just add to that, too, under the, the mayor's leadership, I think our relationship with Duke Energy has been much better. Uh, during the last storm, Duke was actually in our EOC. Um, we were working hand in hand. And also with Pinellas County, um, with the mayor's experience on the county commission, uh, we're in contact with County Administrator Barry Burton. We're having regular meetings. Um, so I think both uh, with Duke and with the county, our, our relationships are much stronger, uh, and that helps us be more prepared. From city staff, we are looking at a press conference later today. Um, a lot of that will depend on the latest info from the next track. So, late this afternoon, early evening. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you.